Uh, my name is Miguel Garzón Martinez, and I am the writer and director of The Broken Legacy. Hi, my name is Cynthia Bravo, and I help in the production of The Broken Legacy, and I also have a small short that's called Guilt, which I directed. Very, very good. <laughs> good. All right, so I always begin with this same, very same question, which is, what started it all? What was the spark of inspiration? Uh, for my film, the inspiration came from my background. I majored in philosophy before I started doing filmmaking. And I was fascinated by uh, one of Plato's dialogues, which is called the Symposium, where he basically asks about immortality. Like he says, all men uh, desire to be immortal, and that's why we have children, that's why we create art. And I really wanted to embody that in one of the characters, but I also wanted to add the contrast of having another character just trying to be happy, like without that pretentious idea of living a legacy, just living a normal life and trying to be happy. And kind of I wanted to play with it and see which one is best. Um, for Mancho, uh, for Gil, I wanted to make a film about the I just got to direct it, uh, but I, when I read it, I thought it was very interesting in the sense of how every action that we make has an impact and you cannot go back. Once you make one decision, then you are on your path that leads you to somewhere and there's no going back. So I just thought that was very strong. Interesting. Cool. Okay. So while you guys were making this, what was the most difficult thing you had to deal with, the biggest challenge? <laughs> I know money, but... Um, yeah. Money, actually, when I look back at the whole production and at the whole experience for me, the biggest challenge is that I feel I didn't have enough time to work on the screenplay. I had like a deadline, really? yeah. I had a deadline where I was gonna get equipment for free, which, um, so I had to have everything ready for that day. And when that day came, uh, the production went pretty smoothly, honestly. I had a great team, and we did a very strong planning. Um, and we had like small things, but nothing major. But yeah, now that I look back at it, just the strip is so important that I I always feel it's not ready enough. Perfection is perfectionist. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I want to say something You about did okay, though. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the broken legacy, the, the set was always super smooth. Like uh, I, that's something that it was really nice to work on. Uh, Miguel did have a lot of time on set, like with the actors, because I acted on that. Yeah. And I remember before each scene, he would come to me and just make sure, like, do you have any questions? How are you feeling? Like. He had the time to. As any good director would do. Exactly. Cause the, but sometimes when you have limited time or limited budget, the director is trying to fix other things or focus on production elements. And in this case, that wasn't the scenario. We were very lucky that he had the freedom to actually talk to his actors. So I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> what about in guilt? Uh, in guilt challenges? Well, money and time. We filmed it in one day. Uh, our budget was Did you really? yeah, everything yeah, was one day. So we had a location change um, middle of the day. Uh, the budget was none. It was just for food and some props. But aside from that, we got the location for free, and the other stuff was filmed at my house. So that's always a challenge, yeah. uh, especially time, because it was one day and it's a very emotional scene. Mm. Scene. Yeah. So I didn't want. I'm an actress. I didn't want to push the talent as to go to a certain point when they're not ready. But Force them. Exactly. Right. So I was trying to give them their space and just allow them to naturally exactly. get there. So I think it happened. Um, oh, yeah. We never started evolving until they were ready. And since it was such a small crew, no one was like antsy or waiting. It's like, okay, let's just give them some space. We wait and then we do it. So time is, like any independent filmmaker, time and money are the biggest challenges, I think. That's right, that's right. What about um, the messages of you guys' film? I know you touched a little bit on it before, but if you had anything to say to people of what you want them to get out of the experience of watching your film, what would that be? Uh, yeah, actually, that reminds me that 
something that inspired me to make this film was uh, when I was in high school, one of my teachers, who's very smart, and actually he was a philosophy teacher, he asked uh, the class one day, what do you want to be when you grow up? And everybody was like, well, I want to be a scientist, I want to be an engineer, you know? I say, I want to be a philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then he say, he, 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 he made us think, because he said, well, nobody say, I want to be happy. Nobody say, I want to be a good father, a good husband, a good person. So that kind of blew my mind, and that made me think at that moment, like, what is the value of being an engineer, being an astronaut, if you're not happy, if you're not a good person? So that made me try to embody those two options into two characters and, and have them collide a little bit to see how we should be striving for more than just a, a dream that could be empty. I love that. Not just fame, not just power, or have a legacy of your being happy in yourself. Yeah. Good. Good. What about uh, I think Kelly? everybody talks a little bit on it. Um, the choices that they make, everything has a consequence. And uh, there's no time machine, unfortunately. So yeah. once you take that step, there's no way to undo it. And that's something that we do on our daily basis, like if we could, if we knew some more information, all those magical scenarios that are worthless, just once you do it, then yeah. you might as well just keep going. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. And uh, tell us, what can we look forward to in the future from you guys? What projects are you guys planning, working on? There's a lot of pressure. <laughs> No, I mean, <laughs> um, but I'm curious, you guys are doing jobs. So. I, I want to hopefully have a career that is driven by those kind of concerns. So actually right now I'm writing a feature film that is set in New York and I, I'm living there right now. So I'm hoping to shoot it at some point in the next two years. It's very, very ultra low budget. And again, it's an exploration of certain questions that drive our everyday life, uh, such as uh, what should I do? What may I hope? Uh, those are basic questions about humanity. Uh, and I'm ho hoping to do something similar to like try to grab questions like that and give them a character and a storyline and have the characters explore. What about for you? What are your uh, future projects? Uh, well, actually, right now we are in post production of a feature film that features Brad uh, uh, Silver. It's a horror film. So we are What's it called? It's called Hiding the Light, and it's awesome. It's <laughs> really, really good. I saw the first cut. I love horror. It's really good. I'll send it to you. Okay. Uh, so we're finishing that. We're, we're hoping to have it picture lost next month. And then later this year, uh, July-ish, we have another feature film that's called The Bone Box. Also really good. It's a psychological thriller kind mm. of thing. It's, um, I can pitch it. <laughs> Oh, Wait a second. Uh, I mean, we have uh, yeah the post production for Hide the Light, and then coming up the Bone Box, and uh, in between doing shorts and just trying to create content and keeping busy and keeping active because this is what That's we what love. Yeah. yeah. Once you realize that money is not an obstacle, then you should just keep doing it and yeah, generate some. Content. Os gustaría decir algo a vuestros compatriotas? Sí, por supuesto. Porque yo sé que tú eres de Colombia y usted es de México. Muy bien. Don't stop the living. <laughs> <laughs> eh, eh, en español, ¿no? Sí. Pues eh, yo tengo una relación un poco lejana con la industria colombiana del cine porque no, yo todo mi trabajo lo he hecho acá en Estados Unidos. Y, sin embargo, estoy intentando conectarme mucho más porque yo sí quiero hacer cine en Colombia en algún punto. Y no, el mensaje es que no importa uno dónde esté o en qué circunstancia de la vida esté, hay que crear, hay que escribir, hay que hacer películas, así sea con la cámara del celular. Sí, ¿verdad? Mira nosotros tres. Claro. Aquí estamos. Sí, yo estoy más o menos en la misma situación. Eh, mi carrera de cine ha sido en Estados Unidos, pero este año, si no es que el siguiente, me interesa ir a México y filmar alguna película allá, porque creo que tenemos muy buenas historias que contar. Eh, vale la pena, hay mucho talento, tengo amigos que están haciendo cine en México y hay muchas oportunidades, hay talento y necesitamos gente que vaya y crea en nuestra propia gente. Entonces, claro. en lugar de esperar a que alguien más vaya y lo haga, creo que es 
todo lo apropiado que yo misma tome las riendas y vaya, invierta en mi propio país y trate de eh, mostrar el talento mexicano. Claro, muy bien, fantástico, gracias.